our 42nd mission, and uh, we were very thankful we got to that without getting killed. Uh, we had some big losses. Uh, the 42nd mission was over Munich, Germany, and there was a, uh, a Messerschmitt aircraft factory outside of Munich, and it was very heavily defended, and uh, we were one of the last planes over the target. We used to rotate our positions in, in the formation. That particular mission, I was tail end Charlie, and by the time we got over the target, the German ra had radar in there, 88 millimeter guns, right. and they had us bracketed in there. And uh, we, got, we dropped our bombs on the target, and just as we were leaving, we got hit by two shells. They knocked out the two engines on the left side, and uh, we had to feather them. The oil was leaking out. And uh, with a B-24, uh, they were, uh, the uh, feathering was hydraulically operated. The B-17 is electrically operated. But you had to um, feather them pretty fast before you lost your oil. So we, uh, we feathered the two and um, we started to lose altitude. The formation flew away from us and we were all by ourselves. Uh, fortunately, there were no enemy aircraft around, uh, but we kept losing altitude. Well, we managed to get back over the Alps and we get back over Austria. <coughs> and I said, guys, were pretty badly damaged. Not only were the two engines out, but uh, some of the uh, fragments had hit the hydraulic line and all the hydraulic oil had leaked out. Yeah. So we had no landing gear, no flaps, nothing. Everything was hydraulically operated. Right. I said, yeah. I don't think we're gonna make it back. If you wanna bail out, we're over Austria, uh, but you'll be taken prisoner of war. The, Austria was still in German hands. Uh, they said, no. One of the waist gunners is wounded and we don't want to leave him. Uh, we'll stay with you. So I said, okay. So we kept flying, we kept losing altitude. We're over the Adriatic Ocean, about halfway between Italy and Yugoslavia. Kept losing altitude. I'm at 5,000 feet and uh, I thought we could make it back with the two good engines. But I had so much power on the two good engines that one of them overheated and we only had one engine left. If an engine overheats, you have to feather it, otherwise you'll lose it and it'll tear the wing off. So um, with only one good engine, there was no way you could keep the B-24 flying. So I said, we're gonna have to crash land in the ocean. I said, take your ditching positions. And uh, everybody did, I guess. Anyhow, without flaps, uh, we hit the ocean pretty hard, probably 135 miles an hour, and it was like hitting a brick wall. Yeah. And the nose went under, it came back up again, and uh, the front windshield broke, and I was covered with plexiglass, and I got tossed out of the plane. I don't know how, I don't remember, I blacked out. And I'm under the water, I see the sun shining up there, and I was a good swimmer, so I paddled up. And uh, the bombardier, had climbed up on the wing or one of the wings to get one of the life rafts out. There were two life rafts, one in each wing. But we only had time to get one life raft out and the plane sank in about five minutes. So uh, the flight engineer had been sitting under the top turret, which caved in when we hit the water. And he got crushed, we couldn't get him out. And the wounded uh, waist gunner uh, drowned, we couldn't get to him in time. So eight of us survived. And it's a five-man rubber life wrap. Each, each one of the ones in the wings carried five people. And there were eight of us. So five of them got in the rubber life wrap. Three of us held onto the sides in the water. Well, we're floating around for about three hours. Nobody came for us. <clears throat> All of a sudden, I see a P-38 flying over us. Uh, it's an American fighter pilot. And he was waggling his wings and and circling around, and evidently he called the SC Rescue because about two hours later, a Royal Air Force amphibian came out and landed next to the, our life raft and took us in. Well, well, eight of us got in this, it was a little um, walrus amphibian, a single engine amphibian that the RAF used for SC Rescue. Eight of us get in the plane. He tries to take off. 
He couldn't with only one engine. It's too heavy. He says, we got to taxi all the way back to Italy. So we had no choice. We were all sitting in the plane. I was bleeding. One of the guys had a broken leg. And they taxi all the way back and they get to the beach in Italy. And they, they put, push the plane up in the sand. And an English doctor came in and, and patched us up and sent us to an American hospital. Uh, anyhow, I was in the hospital for a couple of weeks. Uh, I wasn't too badly injured. Uh, they did give me a purple heart. Uh, but uh, when I found out that two of my crew were killed, I, I really cried. It was the first time in my life I cried. I hated to lose those guys. Yeah. I was 21 years old when they gave me this plane to fly, and I was the oldest guy in the plane. All of my crew were 18, 19, 20-year-old kids. And I, I really uh, felt terrible that two kids were killed. Could I have done anything to save them? I don't think so. The plane was so badly damaged. I, even if I had reached Italy, we would have had a crash land. And uh, maybe at least I saved eight guys. So I sh should be thankful for that. Yeah, that's Anyhow, good. after the... After I got out of the hospital, I tried to find that P-38 pilot to thank him for calling ASC Rescue. And I uh, could never find him. I went to all the P-38 outfits in, in Italy, asking, anybody see us in a rubber life raft in June of 41? Nobody knew. Well, the war ended. I get back to, uh, from overseas. And uh, I kept trying to find this pilot to thank him. So I contacted all the P-38 groups that were having reunions. And for 70 years I looked for him. Never could find the guy. Nobody knew who it was. All of a sudden, six months ago, a guy walks into the museum here to see these planes. And he says to one of the docents, do you even know a guy that was in a rubber life raft in June of 44 in the Adriatic? And the docent happened to know my story, wow. fortunately. He said, yeah, that was Herb Guinness. So they called me on the telephone, come over here right away, a guy wants to meet you. So I rush over here, and the guy says to me, do you remember a P-38 pilot flying over you when you were in a rubber life raft in June of 44? I said, yeah, I've been trying to find that guy to thank him for 70 years. He said, well, I'm that pilot. <laughs> One in a million chance. Absolutely. I hugged the guy, and, and he lives in Mission Viejo, five miles away from me. And uh, we're very good friends now. <laughs>